They have a great, yeah, yeah. Where'd you go to grade school? Football, Jameson. Where's that? That is on Francisco and Bryn Mawr, uh, off Calif near California and Bryn Mawr. Come on, Danny boy, hurry up. Well, yeah, so I didn't see her for 40 years. <laughs> Reconnected a few years ago. See what time it is. It's uh, 53. We got eight minutes, seven minutes. Um, Has he been to this location? Yeah, he's. He, oh, that's, so that's good. Is vegetarianism a, a, a big st style or trend or lifestyle we in are Israel? Explode. Oh. In Israel? Um, Did you mention the. Only in that. They have a veg little vegetarian movement there, but I, I would say only in that. Um, people in the Middle East eat a lot healthier than we do any old way. So, yeah, they get, they get, it started as a farming country, and, and in order to protect themselves, they, the whole outskirts was farmed, kabutzim. Yeah, no, this is sort of like a socialism. I wondered if there was a connection there with uh, vegetarianism. Not, not to my knowledge, I, not to my knowledge, but there are vegetarians there and vegetarian restaurants. And like I say, even the mainstream population yeah. eats more vet, healthier than we do. And Frances Moore Lopez, Le you've met her? I have never met her. Oh, you haven't? Okay. No. She's still alive, right? She's still alive and she works with her daughter, I think. There are a lot of famous vegetarians I have met, though, because I brought them in as speakers. Uh, John McDougall. Um, Neil Barnard. Yeah, Joel Furman, he's all over uh, PBS uh, these days. I, got, I deal with him, I don't like him that much. What that? John Robbins. Yeah. Michael Pollan? Yeah. I don't know him. Who's I know he the guy Michael that does Brenner. a Metro mix? Metro media, Metro no. farm? No, uh, Pullen is a, he's a professor oh, somewhere. Oh, Pullen, I've read his That's book. It. I've read his book, I don't know. A lot of famous vegetarians I've brought in the speakers, like John McDougall, Neil Barnard, Joel Furman, who's all over PBS these days, um, Michael Greger, John Robbins. Here's your name of your radio show or your TV? What? TV show, Go Veggie with K. And, and it came out of the not-for-profit uh, Go Veggie. It's not, not being telecast anymore? It is not, no. It was on Comcast for about a year and a half. We're going to, I'm going to switch from, I want to get us just so we can stream our thing. We got to, like this phone bill cost me two fifty a month just to have this line and that's what's broken. And that's just that's so right. people can hear it. So we got to figure a way where we can do the show and just stream the sucker all the time. Then we can do it whenever we want. <laughs> sure. We could do that if we had a good reliable internet to the cafe. That's all. Well, let's, let's, that's our priority. This week I'm going to fix that, figuring it out. And we could do it to here and then we don't have to have the phone line. So that it's just in real time? Yeah, it would be real uh -huh. time. See, right now you can listen to it in real time. You can watch it in real time. You can get it online, on, you know, both air and online. And then we videotape and it goes on YouTube. We could we could do that right now with a half a dozen different services. Live you stream. To, you need to come up with a kind of a proposal. Say, Mike, this I think what we ought to do. Boom, boom, boom. And then I'm going to talk to, and we can all talk to this guy Peter, who does the. He's the engineer here. He also does B E Z and all that stuff. And he's the. And he brought it up. These guys are laughing. Can I get a little further this way so I don't pull sure. this? Two of the permanent restaurants are people who came out of the Bread Chef kitchen. Uh-huh. One is Red named Chef? I Don't Say, the other being, uh, a heart, uh, the other being um, uh, Blind Faith. Blind Faith, the original Blind Faith? I thought we were the inspiration for them. Fran and Ivan? 
Fran and I when used to eat at the bread shop kitchen all the time. And then when they first started, um, um, Fran and I, I want to write it down, I forgot their names. Yeah. When they first started, they had some real. They had my system that I invented, which you just go up, you order, you pay, tell us your name, and then we call your name. Yeah. But maybe they took from different places. Yeah, they did. I I'm always sure told us we were their inspiration, but I'm sure they, <laughs> just like I was looking at everybody at that time. Sure. This guy's praying away. You, you take that box go, off I of remember you fast, juice fasting all the time. Yeah. You'd come in and buy juices. Yeah, I did a thing uh, that I heard from my buddy Megan. So three days of vegetables, three days of fruit, three days of juice, three days of herb tea, and three days of water. And since then, I you know I had a million combinations, and I you know I go up in weight, and I'll you know I've been working out, but muscle is more weighs more than fat. But I uh, I'm thinking about doing it. You know what I like is that South Beach diet. You eat, it's just vegetables and a little meat. Uh -huh. You know you don't eat you don't eat sugar vegetables like you don't get carrots, you don't get uh, um. corn. Yeah, I don't do much corn anyhow. Uh, beets. Um, I like it, but I, you know, you can eat a little chicken or fish. Who dreams shot dead? Look at this. Oh man. What's it say? This kid from Washington High. I'm oh, gonna get killed. I'm not gonna leave it now. Is it okay that I have these note things yeah. in front of me? You know, Jesse Jr. is getting treated for depression and gastrointestinal issues. He had one of those stomach... Yes, I, I, that's the first thing I thought of. I bet he yeah. messed himself up. Five killed in one night. Mm -hmm. Look at your compassion. Thank you, Bob. Hey, good to see you. I know you so good. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm ready when you guys are. How you doing? Good, we're ready. So it, we uh, just got to talk. Yeah, I've. Uh, I just, uh, it'll take me. I'll, I'll wait and make sure it's working. I've never used this particular studio. I'm just a matter of pressing the right button. I'm here in Ham right now. Okay. Got to make sure these are turned on. Okay. Uh, you know, I'll have a song. What did you want to play? Uh, I just want to have a song ready in case there's a problem. You um, gave me that Pete Seeger disc. Was there something you want from there? You just yeah. Well, the one we want from there is the little boxes one. Yeah. Okay. And that, but uh, you could pick anything you want. Okay. That, well, that's just in case. Otherwise, we'll just go over here. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll queue up the that's Hendrix. That guy. He might be friendly and he's okay. talking. All right, but I'll. We're good then. All right. I'll wait yeah. you. I just don't know about this part. So I talking to here. Okay. Yeah. And I think there's a. Tell him that he's got, the, he usually does the Jimi Hendrix. Yeah. Little Boxes is. What? Little Boxes is a good one, too. Which one? Little Boxes. Yeah. What's the point of wearing headphones? You don't have to wear them. I don't know if you know the story of that song. Say what? Little Boxes, how it was written. It's written well, by was, a, was that woman in San Francisco about Berkeley. Bill Valley? Yeah. Little boxes, little boxes, they all in little boxes. Oh, I remember that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it doesn't have to start at the exact second. He's finishing up. It's one on one. Oh, he's still one. I gotta do this. I think. How do I know if it's too loud? Or... Right here. You don't worry about any of that. Just keep it right about there. Okay.
Well, here we are once again. Usually we're from the very lovely and sunny corner of Glenwood and Lund in the heart of Rogers Park up on the stage at the Heartland Cafe. But this week we're downtown at the very lovely studios at 26 East Pearson, the WLUW uh, radio setup. It's quite plush. It uh, gives us more room to stretch out. And we have uh, equipment that seems to be working just fine. We're down here today because we did have a little trouble, which is the nature of community radio. Uh, and it gives us an opportunity to, uh, to actually ad advance our, uh, our understanding of how this all works. And uh, I'm Michael James. I'm your host for this morning's edition. Perhaps Katie Hogan will be here. She was uh, finishing up her work on a garden before going to a big family affair. And I hope she comes. We're going to have a, a wonderful show this morning. I've got uh, my old friend Kay Stepkin, who was the founder of the Bread Shop, an inspirational institution here in Chicago. And uh, a little bit later, we're going to have Nick Wexler coming up, and we're going to talk about him growing up in Levittown, New Jersey. Uh, Levittown, Pennsylvania, I believe. And um, it was a uh, very interesting there because it had to do with a lot of uh, questions of housing and race in the 50s. Okay. Uh, I uh, got a message from Katie. She heard the countdown on the air, so I'm glad you're listening, Katie. And if you get here, that's great. If you don't, have a great day. Okay, Kay Stepkin, good morning to you. Hi, Michael. Thanks so much for coming on the show. I know I had to hound you to get you to do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, last time we had talked, you, uh, you were teaching school, and you actually had me come into... Uh, I think it was Wells High School? I was the librarian at Wells High School. And I brought yeah. some baked goods from the Heartland. Uh, for the kids, and we, uh, we I talked about the history of the Heartland and food, and a little politics, and who knows what how they received it. <laughs> I think that a, a number of them received it very well. Yeah, they would talk to me about it afterwards, and really enjoyed your talk. It well, was I, fun. I uh, I have to say, you were a very important person in my life because uh, when I was still running around with rising up angry, uh, trying to uh, organize people to take on various injustices. I had acquired an interest in healthy food. My uh, good friend David Megacy uh, had turned me on to a fast of uh, three days of vegetables, three days of fruit, three days of uh, juice, three days of herb tea, and three days of water. I was doing a lot of running. I had met a guy named Richard Catlett who had uh, uh, brought me out to Columbia, Missouri, and I was talking to people about politics. This was about 74 or 5, and he uh, he uh, actually, we were eating uh, strawberry shortcake and at a diner, and he said, you shouldn't be eating that. And I said, well, you're eating it. He says, but I don't do it all the time. And he took me out to his health food store on Business Loop something in Columbia, Missouri. <clears throat> and I came back to Chicago with pineapple juice that was cooked at a, a low enough temperature that it didn't kill everything off, and lots of vitamins and kelp and things like that. And uh, he was a key inspiration, and I started looking around town, and I found uh, Sherwin's Health Food Store, and I found your wonderful place, the bread shop, and there was a, a store where I picked up a book, uh, The Miracle of Fasting by Paul Bragg, oh, I over, that book. over on I still Broadway. Have it. And uh, so let's get started with we're going to talk a little history about the natural foods movement, the whole foods movement in Chicago. And the bread shop was integral to that. It was the early pioneer. How did you get into that, Kate? It started about three or four years before I started the bread shop. So in the late 60s, um, I had moved to Berkeley uh, after I graduated from... Uh, Berkeley, California? Yeah. Wow. I graduated from the University of Illinois, moved out there for the fun of it. I was living there, too, until 66. I went there 64 to 66. I was there 65. Were you around 64, the 64, 65. Movement? I was there. I was my first arrest. Oh, <laughs> we could have met. I heard Mario Savio. Yeah. Oh, great. I didn't know this part of you. Either. Yeah, yeah. And I um, uh, had roommates. And one night, my roommate went out. I've always loved to read. Uh, and I just was browsing through her books. And um, I picked up a James Bond book. Um, and James Bond like the movie guy. James Bond like the movie guy. Um, oh gosh, right. It'll, it'll come to me the name of the book. Um, at any rate, in it, uh, like around page 9 or 10, if this had been on page 50, I might not be a vegetarian today, but about page 9 or, because the, the book wasn't that great, but about page 9 or 10, uh, M calls Bond into his office, 
Uh, and he's angry. Bond is run down, he's running around too much, he's drinking too much, not getting enough sleep. And M says to him, we are sending you uh, to uh, uh, an herb farm. Um, and you are going to get healthy because this cannot go on much longer. And very reluctantly, Bond goes to this farm. And at any rate, in the talk, M says to Bond, um, you know, Bond, James, he says, uh, we remove 20, I'm making up the number, but we remove 25 nutrients from, uh, from a loaf of bread. We add back eight and we call it enriched. He says, and, and, and um, people are just not, not eating the way nature intended us to eat. And I, it just, something clicked in me. I had never heard this before. It just fascinated me. Went to the library the next day. I came back with an armload of books. Started reading. Uh, um, well, most of the books also I didn't quite relate to, but one I did, and that was in Adele Davis's book called Let's Eat Right. I, I remember that's the name of it. Yeah. And, oh God, Adele had me taking vitamins all day long, eating liver for breakfast, liver for lunch. But she, but she got me on that path, and in fact, I learned how to make my first loaf of, loaves of bread through Adele Davis's book, Let's Cook It Right. Uh, Adele Davis. You know, I did hear one thing about Adele Davis, that she, I guess she lived a good amount of time, but she did get sick in her, in her old age. She and died I, of cancer. And I think she had taken, there was one thing she wrote, I don't know if it was under her name, but she took acid. Did you ever hear that story? She took LSD? Yeah. How interesting. Uh, yeah, so let's just check it out. Anyone out there uh, has some heard information? That. I heard it, and I, uh, you know, and I must have heard it from somebody of some reputable uh, reputation. Uh, so let's just look into that one. So you, uh, so you got turned on to vegetarianism. You came back to Chicago, obviously, after yes. Berkeley. Uh, what year did you come back? Well, I traveled a lot for four or five years there. So I, I lived in Berkeley for a couple of years. I would come back, live in my parents' house. Um, now your dad, I remember your dad. I think, was he a truck driver or a bread truck delivery guy? Uh, a meat. Meat delivery meat, he guy. Was, he was, um, <laughs> How he appropriate. Had a, he had a wholesale uh, a meat route. Um, he was a, what did he call He called himself a jabber. So he would buy meat from David Berg, Kosher Zion, and sell it to restaurants. And what did he think? And you? When you opened a vegetarian uh, store, like the bread shop. He, it wasn't just opening the bread shop. I had so many political ideas at that time. Um, and he begged me to, he says, why don't you just work in a health food store for a year? He says, I promise you, if you work in a place for a year, uh, learn how to do it. At the end of the year, um, he says, I will give you the money to, to open a place. I would not hear of it. I had to do it right, right now. <laughs> I was in such a hurry. Um, so he, I started the bread shop with one thousand dollars. He and I knew uh, that he would not give me a thousand and one. This was it because he figured whatever he gave me was going to go down a hole because I had so many goofy ideas that I lived out during those first five, four or five years of the bread shop. So what year did the bread shop actually open? Open in March of seventy one. And it was on Halstead at Roscoe. No, I opened at uh, thirty six forty three North Broadway, where the North Community State Bank is right now. The only reason I was able to rent that space uh, financially is because the owner of the building, Sam Malkind, knew that it was going to be torn down. He had it and was selling it to the bank. And so he didn't care. He was just going to keep it empty until I happened to wander by one day. Well, I'm, I'm really sorry I didn't get to see the first bread shop, but when did you move over on Halstead? Uh, a year later, January of uh, 72. It was such a wonderful place. You would, uh, it was on the corner and you would walk in and it was, uh, it was airy and you know, you, it was the first time I'd seen all kind of different honey and <clears throat> these, these loaves of bread were coming out and it was, uh, it was quite wonderful. And you got me eating pretty well. What were the inspirations uh, in terms of uh, other health food stores or whole food stores in those days? There, there wasn't much. There was one store uh, that was an inspiration, but basically back then we had what you call health food stores. We didn't call them natural food yeah, stores. Yeah, they had these kind of traditional places downtown. You get carrot yes. juice, lots of vitamins, and yes. you know they were very different than what what you opened. Downtown, and there was one in uptown, and one on the south side, and basically it was packaged foods, uh, a lot of vitamins. And I remember on the weekends they would get an organic chicken. I would go and buy an organic <laughs> chicken on the weekend. You were still but eating there, meat. Uh, I was eating meat until the year before I started the bread shop. So I, I started eating healthy in 65, became a vegetarian in 70, opened the bread shop in 71. Um, but there was one place called The Family that was on Southport, 
uh, it, it wasn't. It was open for maybe a year. Lauren McCune started it. Um, he sold it to Tom Swan. Uh, Tom moved it to Halstead and changed the name to Food for Life. Uh, that was an inspiration. They they had bulk food. I had never seen that before. That they sold sold bulk food out of bins. So that was definitely an inspiration for me selling bulk food. Um, he got Food for Life got very big. He. Uh, rented the, uh, an empty storefront next door. He started a warehouse out of there and he started delivering, uh, you know, 50 pound bags of flour. And he then went out to Elmhurst, opened a huge factory there. He got probably too big too fast. And then the thing collapsed. Is he around still anywhere? anywhere? I believe, the, the last <laughs> I heard, I, uh, until you, you told me that Bob Kaur is still around, I didn't yeah, know this. Yeah, Kaur's Ginseng Rush, and more recently, Blueberry Rush. Well, Tom Swan, when a whole, uh, when Food for Life closed, went to work for Bob Kaur. That's where Ginseng I know Tom Rush. Swan from. See, I knew him from there. Uh, yeah. uh, tell us a little bit about uh, what you remember, like I, I think uh, Bob Core actually, did his folks have a place or? Yes, it was called Earth and Sea and it was on the south side. Yeah, it's, it was down in Beverly yeah. I think. Oh, that could be. Well, uh, so what's happened since? You ran the bread shop for a long time. 25 and, years. Yeah, it's a good long yeah. amount of time. Also had a restaurant out of there and a couple of... The bread shop kitchen. The bread shop kitchen. Several people who worked in my restaurant went on to start their own restaurants. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we, you, uh, you sold the bread shop. It became something else at some point. And uh, then, what did you do after that, Kate? Um, I remembered. It took a while. I was trying. What am I? Right before, for several years before I started the bread shop, I was a waitress, and I loved it at that time. It was very exciting to me. Um, and I was trying to figure out what in the world should I do. And a, a friend reminded me. She says, "Didn't you used to be a teacher?" I sort of had so put that out of my mind, and I thought, um, well, I'll go back, uh, I'll substitute in the Chicago schools, and let's see if there's some place that might interest me, some way I could fit in there. And I was substituting, and one day my class went into the library, and I knew instantly, oh, I would love to be a librarian. What fun. And I have been a, was a librarian for a number of years. And then um, about two years ago, I started writing a vegan column for the Chicago Tribune. How did that? How'd you get that gig? <laughs> Very serendipitously. Um, one day I'm re I, I always read the newspapers. I love the Tribune. And one day I'm reading the food section, and there was a recipe for a whole wheat cookie. And I'm looking at it, and the reporter neglected to say whether to use whole wheat bread flour or whole wheat pastry flour. She just said whole wheat flour. Well, this bothered me so much. I just could not get it. I couldn't stop thinking about it because I knew that people who made this cookie, it's much easier to find whole wheat bread flour than pastry flour, and a number of people would use bread flour, and their cookies were going to be dry and hard, and they were going to say, see, I never did like the idea of natural foods. They taste terrible. And it just really bothered me. And I sent an email to the reporter, and I, it took me weeks to write uh, this email. I just, um, I didn't have that much confidence in my writing ability, and I just, I, I, but I really wanted to make a point to her, so I wrote her an email, and then I thought, well, she's going to say, well, who's this person? What, what does she know? So at the end, I said, I used to own a, a natural foods bakery. Uh, within 20 minutes, she emailed me back, and um, she was more interested in my last sentence, and she says, what was your bakery? And I said, the, the bread shop turned out that she had been a customer there and loved the place. Remembered our scones with, um, <laughs> remembered our scones well. And uh, we started talking, started a conversation, and one thing led to another, and within some months I was writing a column. For and you still do that column? Or? I do, uh -huh. I do. How I, often does I it come out? I love doing it. Uh, it comes out every other week, every other Wednesday in their food section. And is there any way people, people could see it online if they went to the Tribune? Yeah, you can go to Tribune.com, just plug in my last name, Stepkin, and there'll be uh, lots of recipes. Well, you, it, after you did started doing your column, you also uh, got into uh, visual media. You got into this. You had a TV show for. A while. I did. Yes, I was running a not-for-profit organization. I, I always was doing sort of multiple vegetarian things at once, uh, b because it's so thrilling to me. I I just I want everyone to be a vegetarian, and um, so I was running an organization called Go Veggie. And we would have these large Thanksgiving dinners. We would bring in wonderful 
uh, well-known uh, vegetarian speakers, and we had a silent auction, and we made some money, so a few thousand dollars, and I thought, gee, it'd be very easy to just fritter this away and have nothing to show for it. Let's do something big, something exciting. And um, I used the money to hire somebody to help write grants, and we got thousands, uh, thousands of dollars in grants, maybe 80,000, 100. We got a number of wonderful grants, and uh, um, we're able to produce an eight series, uh, an eight, sh eight shows in the series that was called Go Veggie with K, and it showed for a year, a year and a half. What was it on uh, cable? Uh... It was on uh, Comcast cable, which is sort of it's like a half a step up from uh, for public access in that. They choose who to take. Where public access takes everybody, this one they choose who to take. Uh, just so everyone knows, you are listening to the Live from the Heartland show. We're brought to you this morning over WLUW 88.7, Chicago Sound Alliance. Uh, you can always get us at 88.7 FM. You can listen to it online at WLUW.org. You can see earlier editions if you go to YouTube.com slash Heartland Media. And normally we broadcast from the uh, stage at the Heartland Cafe at the corner of Glenwood and Lunt in the heart of Rogers Park. We had some uh, equipment problems and so we are downtown at the station studios at 26 East Pearson and we're having a great time. It's air conditioned, it's a quiet little room. You can watch the engineer over there through the window. You can watch the next guest in the entourage in the room next door. It's kind of cool being here. Maybe we should set up a studio up there on the corner. Anyhow, we're talking with Stay Kay Stepkin, who's an old friend of mine and was an inspiration in the, uh, us, uh, Katie Hogan and myself, starting the Heartland Cafe. She had a place called The Bread Shop, and uh, Kay, we've been talking about uh, various uh, history, and I'd like to know what you think is going on now in the terms of food. We have uh, more people talking about vegetarianism, there's more natural food restaurants, uh, the kind of food that people would get at your place in the old days and at the Heartland Cafe today. You can get uh, brown rice many places. Vegetarian is not just uh, canned peas, you know. What's the state of uh, vegetarian movement today? I am so glad you asked that because it is thrilling. Uh, it actually was what I thought was going to happen 40 years ago. Um, uh, we are exploding. We are all over the place. There is a national chain restaurant in Chicago that has three locations. Which one is that? Uh, that's Native Foods. Uh -huh. uh, it's sort of a fast food uh, vegan uh, started in California. Um, uh, uh, there's a place called Urban Vegan on Ashland and Montrose. I'm driving down Ash by Ashland and Fullerton a couple weeks ago and I noticed a big sign second location of Urban Vegan coming soon. Um, it, it's quite amazing. There's an Indian restaurant. Uh, there, there's always been several traditionally vegetarian Indian restaurants in Chicago, but one of them has just turned vegan, and every Monday night, the Arya Bhavan on Devon Avenue, every Monday night has a raw food buffet. Um, so the learning is like going back and forth, but there's lots of other vegetarian stuff happening in Chicago. On September 29th, there is this huge uh, vegan festival called Vegan Mania that's going to be at the Broadway Armory. Um, their website is chicagoveganmania.com. What's the date on that? September 29th. It has thousands of, it had thousands of people in its old location at a small Park District field house. I don't know how many thousands it's going to have this year because it's in a, a location about a venue about three times the size. Um, there's also August 11th and 12th the Veggie Fest in Naperville. Now that's they, a big, big operation. Right? That's enormous. That's outdoors. <laughs> it is enormous. Yeah, the, uh, they have speakers. Um, uh, they have food demos. Uh, they have lots and lots of booths. Uh, it's, it's quite interesting. We had for the first time this year we had the first annual Veggie Pride Parade. Uh, in Grand Park, uh, it attracted several hundred people. I went to that. Well, I saw the poster at the Heartland, but it was it was over by the time I oh, saw it. They it's hard keeping up speaking. with everything these I know, days. There's, so I mean, there's much a lot. On. There's a lot to, to know about and a lot to do. And Meetup, just go to Meetup.com uh, on your computer, and there are, I believe, about four uh, vegan meetups in the Chicago area, doing constantly doing things. What do you do these days? What's your uh, main focus or your multitude of focuses? Um, I, I, I am just, I, um, my life has started afresh once again. 
Um, so I, I have resigned from my job um, as a school librarian. Um, I hope to, uh, so I'm going to be spending more time with my columns at the Tribune. Um, I am, uh, I've been talking to somebody about teaching a veg vegetarian cooking classes, so that's on the agenda. Um, I am going to be speaking, uh, I, I've given a couple of talks recently about vegetarianism. Uh, uh, it started at, my attorney has these salons at his house uh, every couple of months. He's a vegetarian. He is not. Oh, okay. No, but he does things he thinks will be of interest to, to the people who come to it. Um, I'm going to be speaking at Go Veggie Northwest in September, um, and again at Vegan Mania. So I'm not sure exactly where all this will lead. I'm, I'm, oh, I, I recently bought a new house in Andersonville. I've been exploring that neighborhood and loving it. And uh, I, I'm just, I'll just see. <laughs> hey, Stephanie, you're something else. Uh, let's. Uh, I'd like to to talk a little bit about uh, food as a political issue on the planet. I mean, one of the things uh, that inspired uh, us and at the Heartland, and I'm sure you too, was uh, Francis Moore Lapay's book, uh, Diet for a Small Planet. And the premise in the book basically, uh, I think she altered it some since then, but was that you could not meet the world's protein needs on a meat-based diet. And uh, so instead of uh, the kind of American style that I certainly grew up with, with steak and a little bit of vegetables if you were lucky, uh, you would... Uh, <laughs> and from a can at that. <laughs> off the, although we did have a great garden as a kid growing up. Uh, and I was a 4-H club kid. Oh. Uh, there were farms in my hometown, but I don't think there are any left. Um, anyhow, uh, it, the Delta, uh, excuse me, Francis Moore Lapay uh, basically said that you had to mix your grains to get your protein uh, and that you, you know, if you think about a Chinese restaurant, you would, uh, you get rice and vegetables and a little bit of meat. Uh, so we were inspired by that and, uh, you know, uh, today feeding the people on the planet is a real issue. And uh, so, you know, there's a lot of uh, farm, uh, farm to table movements, uh, a lot of uh, kind of uh, angel, angel, angelics. Angelic organics. Organics. They, uh, you know, bringing food from farms to people. There's a lot of interest in they agriculture. They have their own farms. Yeah. Angelic. Uh, so I'm just wondering your, your take on the, uh, the situation of food on the planet and uh, what people can and should do. I'll, uh, I will give you that, but I'd like to go back first to something else that you said, um, that Francis Moore LaPay um, uh, promoted the theory that you had to eat uh, a mixture of grains and beans in order to get a complete protein, and you had to do that at every meal. Several years later, she herself refuted that theory. I just wanted to say that. Um, uh, and she said that the reason she did that, the reason she promoted that theory, um, was just to uh, uh, um, answer uh, uh, meat eater's primary question: Where do you get your protein? She uh -huh. just she just wanted to cover all of her bases, and she says it is not necessary to do that, uh, and it is not. Uh, physicians are saying that also. You uh, you can eat things at different meals, and and they will combine themselves. You don't have to yeah. worry about it. So uh, it's true. That it's a very odd thing that we do is that uh, we think that we're getting our, uh, it, it, we think we need to get our protein from animals, but where are the animals getting their protein? They are <laughs> eating they, that grass. Eating that grass, yeah. Um, and um, Americans at any rate, we have no protein problem, unless you're just eating Fritos and potato chips all day. There's protein everywhere. There's even protein in lettuce. We really don't have to worry about it. Uh, other places where they are scrambling f to have food to eat m might have to think about protein, but um, uh, the, the animals, um, it takes so much more plant protein so to feed land. the animals, so much land to raise the protein to feed the animals, so much more land than it would take if we would just eat our protein direct from the land like those animals do. And um, also thinking of people think that, oh, you need protein to be strong and healthy. Think about who our biggest land animals are. They're vegetarians. Buffalo. Buffalo vegetarians, <laughs> elephants vegetarians, giraffes vegetarians. Yeah. Good point. 
Well, is there any uh, anything you would like to add to this conversation before we uh, are going to take a break and bring on our next guest? Uh, I would like to see everybody start eating less and less meat. The evidence is all around us. Uh, there's wonderful people who are speakers. There's great books to read about it. It's irrefutable. Um, start eating lower on the food chain. Okay, Stepkin, it's great to have you on the show. And uh, I encourage people to read your Tribune uh, article every two weeks. And uh, is there a website or an email or any of that where people who are really excited could contact you or find out more about you? They could contact me at the initial K, Stepkin, S-T-E-P-K-I-N, at gmail.com. Okay, you're great. Thanks so much.